This lesson will teach you how to install an electronic instrument control loop. But before you can install a loop, you must understand basic loop functions. You must know how to find the loop items, and you have to be able to test and terminate wires, wire pairs, and cables. Each plant and many times individual control centers in one plant, have slight differences in instrument loop layout, operation, and terminology. This lesson will teach you the common points. For instance, the heart of any electronic control loop is the controller. The controller receives the signal from the electronic transmitter. And the controller produces the output signal that goes to the I to P transducer. The I to P transducer converts the electronic controller output, which is current, into a pneumatic signal that is compatible with the control valve. In addition, the controller and or the transmitter may provide information to a computer. and the computer can supply the controller with information. These are the basic components for any electronic control loop. Control loops can also vary in great detail. For instance, these are Foxborough 62H controllers. They use 10 to 50 milliamps for transmitter and transducer signals. These are Veritrack compact control stations. They use 4 to 20 milliamps for transmitter and transducer signals. These are Foxborough Spec 200 control stations. The Spec 200 controllers are located in this rack and are separated from the control stations. The Spec 200 system uses 0 to 10 volt signals. The SPEC 200 system uses special current-to-voltage units that receive the 4 to 20 milliamp signals from the transmitters. Similar units, called V to I cards, are used to convert the 0 to 10 volt controller output into a 4 to 20 milliamp output. This is a DDC controller. DDC stands for Direct Digital Control. When the controller is in the digital position, the computer actually operates the valve. The direct digital controller is just an interface device between the computer and control valve. This is a supervisory loop. When this controller is in the remote or computer position, the computer moves the set point by pulsing a set point stepping motor. The controller then takes action by making appropriate output signal changes, just as if you had moved the set point. This supervisory controller must be in the remote position before the computer can move the set point. This is also a supervisory control station. When in the C or computer position, the loop is on computer supervisory control. The updating is done electronically. There is no set-point motor. Let's examine an electronic instrument loop in more detail. Notice that the transmitter and I to P transducer are located in the field. The controller and computer are located in the control center. The controller is located in panel A. The computer is located in the computer room. Most of the signals in the control loop are two-wire signals. For instance, the input and output signals for this loop are 4 to 20 milliamp current signals. Control centers contain hundreds of instrument loops. Therefore, it would be very impractical to run a separate two-wire cable from each transmitter and I to P to the associated controller. So, 
multi-pair cables are used to connect field and control center loop items to each other. Multi-pair cables also interconnect various control center loop items. A single multi-pair cable may contain as many as 300 pairs of wires. One end of the multi-pair cable wires terminate in a field junction box. This is the cable. And these are the wire pairs that go to transducers and transmitters. A given control loop normally requires two wires to carry the signal from the transmitter to the control center. And two wires to bring the signal from the control center to the I to P transducer at the control valve. Notice the shields coming out of the two wire cables. The shields are tied to the multi-pair cable shield. The shield eliminates electrical noise that could interfere with the signals. The other end of the multi-pair cable wires is connected to a terminal strip or terminal board in the control center. The control center terminal strip is located in a cubicle or terminal cabinet. Some plants use the term TS to designate terminal strip, while others use the term TB for terminal board. The terminal board may receive a group of signals to be transferred to other smaller terminal boards, such as this 24-wire unit. Or the field cable may terminate on a number of small individual control loop terminal boards, such as these two-wire terminals. The multi-pair cable is also shielded from electrical noise. The outer plastic covering and inner metal shield are shown here. The shield is tied to a ground bus. The only place the shields are grounded is in the control center. This drawing shows how the cable shields are connected from the field to the house. The only place the shield is grounded is in the control center. Now work exercise number one in your workbook.